Uh, morning and welcome to the first week uh, 2020. Uh, we're here for the first of our Let's Chat interviews with local community groups that have been helping out during lockdown. Uh, my name's Lisa MacDonald and I, I operations assist, assistant with the Five Centre of Qualities. Uh, today I have Elric who works alongside me who will be doing all the techie stuff for me and popping in with questions that you may wish to ask uh, via Facebook. We've also got Leslie, who uh, is our interpreter for the day. And we have guest uh, Gail from uh, Leslie Community Pantry and Nairi and Shirley from Food for Your Future. OK, so today I would like we're going to discuss how these two groups started and everything. So, Gail, would you like to introduce yourself and uh, hear some background about what Le Leslie Community Pantry does? Yeah, um, so my name is Gail Wilson and I'm one of the lead volunteers for Leslie Community Pantry. <clears throat> about three weeks into lockdown, um, I put it out there on our community Facebook to know the hardship just now um, and we want to I want to try and do something and um, does anybody have any ideas or um, anybody would like to help instantly a local pub and um, the station hotel got back to us and said yeah absolutely we'll be involved as much as we can and um, so we set up a food pantry in their beer garden which was under shelter and um, we opened it up on a Thursday um, the 8th of April and we've been going ever since so far we've handed out over um, 1,500 emergency food packages um, to our visitors um, and the numbers are slowly dropping just now but um, we're pretty confident that the numbers are going to increase in the future um, with the risk of redundancies and um, the furlough scheme coming to an end real soon. Um, we've taken the decision to turn it into a full-time charity. We're in the process of filling out our charity um, Oscar forms we're working alongside Fife Council to try and get us up and running in a, in a new premise where we'll operate five days a week. Um, and we're also going to be a satellite for the Glenothis Food Bank. Um, so once we become a satellite for Glenothis Food Bank, um, we'll be the first food bank in the United Kingdom to be open. And that's all. <laughs> Oh, that's really good. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Charlie, Sorry. Would you like to explain like the uh, main uh, ethos of Food for Your Future, please? Um, so we started um, as a pantry in February um, with the main ethos of reducing food waste. Um, and then lockdown happened and we were closed for a couple of weeks because we run from a five council building we opened back up on the 16th of april and um, we um, were a community group so it's all volunteers uh, we're self-funded so we applied for funding um which was we had an amazing response um we opened up on the 16th of april uh, to give out free uh, pantry bags so ambient fresh surplus food etc to individuals, families. We initially opened um, at the request from Fife Council uh, to the Abbey View area, and then we expanded into four different other areas, kind of doing Southwest and Fermont. Um, so far to date, we've given over uh, 1,400 bags. We've reached 3,634 people, which is generally a kind of 60 40 split of adults and children. Um, and we've given out probably over about 40 tonnes of food, probably much more than that. But um, yeah, it's it's been amazing the response that we've that we've received. We run on a Thursday, people register for the bags on a Wednesday. Um, we're just waiting to kind of hear when we can get back into the building, we've allowed people back in to continue our pantry as normal. The demand for the uh, signing up of new members has been amazing we've tripled our membership uh kind of in the last few weeks people wanting to come in and actually kind of you know select the food themselves so we're just waiting for that to happen that, that, that's really good hearing those type of numbers for people that want to get you know asking for that type of help and get involved in it 
Yeah, it's been amazing. And um, a lot of them are interested in the food waste side of it as well. So uh, this week is Zero Waste Week. Um, so on our Facebook page, you'll find lots of information on helping reduce your food waste. Um, it's not just about helping people budget better or getting free food. It's also about reducing the amount of food that gets sent to landfill. So. Mm. Um, oh, I Sorry, we can't hear you. You're breaking up. Sometimes Lisa's connection drops, so that's why I'm here for backup. I was going to ask you a question. Is it, is it how many tons of food did you mention? Um, so we've given out over forty tons of food in the last, well, since the sixteenth of April. That's so much, and and you would say, so is it all of that from avoiding waste as well? So food that would have been wasted, or a lot of it will be surplus food that we collect from supermarkets, etc. Um, we do, we have been buying food as well, the ambient side of it, to 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 help people. Um, so yeah, it's a mixture of both. So. Is this something that you think is happening quite a lot uh, that people don't realise uh, that they could actually prevent? Or because uh, that sounds like a massive amount of of waste that uh, we don't even talk about very, very often. So in uh, 2019 figures from uh, RAP.org, the, in the UK, 6.6 .6 million tons of household food um, was put to landfill and 70% of that was probably perfectly still edible and that equates to about £340 per family or per household per year. You can have a week's holiday for that. That's yeah. incredible. Oh my gosh. Uh, what, uh, what about you, you Gail? So you're, you're saying that you're going to settle um, as like basically linked uh, as a satellite uh, in Glen Rothers. Is, yeah. is, is, could be something that you do actually keep in, keep, in, keep in sight or? It's not something that we're doing at the moment. Um, we operate Monday to Friday and um, if we had any fresh produce by the Friday night, we were then handing it over to a community pantry that was open on a Saturday. So um, we're passing food around trying to make sure that it gets used because we know there's a lot of families in need of food and there's nothing worse than putting it in the bin. So. Um, any fresh soup packs or fruit and veg, we would hand over to the Strollers Community Pantry in Glen Uthis. Um, but going forward with the food bank, I know the food bank are very much um, trying to do zero waste um, and they weigh their food and things like that as well. So um, we have, we'll be following their protocol and doing all that. Uh, just, just to make sure, oh sorry, I was trying to ask, like it's cutting, but uh, is it still possible to, to sign up then to, to both your projects at the moment? And actually, if anyone wants to find out, actually sign up to the list, or is it that you got loads of waiting lists that are going on? Or? So, Leslie Community Pantry is open to anybody. Um, we're open Monday to Friday, 10 to 5, and you can just come into the station hotel in Leslie pick a bag and take what you need. Um, there's no registration forms or anything like that at the moment. Um, going forward, it will be something that we will be implementing um, when we get to charity status. But just now, it's just a community project where um, like local supermarkets and Fife Council are really good with us and they deliver us um, lots of fresh produce and like um, cupboard essentials. So the community can just come along and take what they need. And if it stops someone having to get on a bus going down to Asda's, then that's fine with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what, so how, how has it been for, for, for yourselves and for the volunteers? Because obviously you, you had to be stay safe uh, at the same time as everyone must have been a bit worried about uh, how to avoid uh, contracting COVID, but also balancing that with actually we need to help, we need to do something here. So how has it been getting that uh, together? Um, a lot of our volunteers have been really grateful for the opportunity to do this because a lot of them are elderly or live by themselves. Um, so they would have been like isolated within their own home. Um, volunteering at the pantry has given them an opportunity to um, like still chat with other people and see other people. Um, so they've Excellent. That's Lisa's back. Can you hear us, Lisa? 
<laughs> yes, sorry guys. Connection is usual here. <laughs> That's why there's two of us. <laughs> uh, I was just asking Gail about, about uh, basically whether people can still connect, but I was also wondering about uh, there's all these uh, new projects that we all have started our cross five uh, since well, lockdown and there's this, this thing about we really want to help out but we've got to make sure to be safe as well and and uh it's a, it's a tension between uh, the two of them I, I was going to ask uh Nairi, what about your side uh, how many volunteers do you have how do you keep safe um well we actually so we there's six volunteers that run our pantry um and on a wednesday is um we you know, at the moment there's about four, four to six of us on a Wednesday. We we go into the Fife Council building. That's where we make up the ambient food bags. And then on the Thursday, and um, because obviously we're not allowed in the Fife Council building, and um, we operate from outside in the car park. So we're obviously all social distancing. We've got the marker set out for the two meter distancing out in the car park, um, and we're all given slots. So. So when they phone up and register on a Wednesday, um, they're given a time slot, um, so it's normally 12 within every 15 minutes, um, and they come up and then there, it's only the set 12 people that's allowed in the car park. Um, collect, and then obviously social distance and obviously come up and collect their bags, we put them on the table, we can step back and keeping ourselves safe, keeping them safe as well. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. So... <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, I, I could lose a question. No, you go ahead. <laughs> the, the question that I was trying to say for my connection really inter rudely interrupted us was that um, because of lockdown and because we're going through this um, sort of pandemic, do you feel that people are embracing these community pantries more now than they were before? You know, people are not scared to go to them, ask for help. Yeah. Now they're willing to go and ask for th this type of help now. Yeah. I think it's become uh, less stigmatised, if you like. Um, uh, there's still some people, I think, that, that kind of wouldn't come. But until you explain kind of, you know, what we actually are about, then it kind of softens. But yeah, I mean, the, as I said before, the demand that we've had for membership is... Um, increased by about three three times the amount of members that we already had signed up. Um, and going forward, what Gail said earlier, kind of coming into October, we don't know what's going to happen with furlough. People are, more people are going to become unemployed. Families are going to struggle even harder. Um, so it's just about kind of, you know, trying to kind of ease that a little bit, let them help budget better, give them a kind of good, uh, nutritious, healthy food option without the supermarket prices obviously um so yeah oh. yeah what do you feel when people go to your pantry um i think we've had a really good response but i think it's because our volunteers are all local people they're all familiar faces in the community so um they've came along to us and there's people who have popped in and not taken anything but just offloaded their problems and their worries with us over covid and and whatnot. Um, we've been able to signpost a few people, a few families as well, because there's a lot of families in Leslie that don't realise there's other support out there for them. There's a lot of single parents or um, families that need like white goods and gas and electricity top up. So we've been able to signpost them to Five Gingerbread, Homestar, and um, we've put them in touch with Cozy Kingdoms and castle furniture and things like that. So we're just trying to help the community as best we can and provide them with the information. Um, and whether they choose to go and sign up to these organisations or not, that's completely up to them. But it's just letting them know that there is organisations out there that can help like help them even more than what we can, providing them some food. Um, so do you feel Fife Council is being more helpful with situations like this, you know, they've got more involved in helping community groups like this. Fife Council have been a fantastic support to Leslie Community Pantry. Um, they do a weekly delivery to us on a Tuesday morning and they have done from maybe about four weeks into starting up. 
Um, they have been fantastic with the community pantry. They put us in contact with the food bank as well to um, see about a, a collaboration with the satellite. Um, so that's all thanks to them for doing that. Um, you think that they've gone off the food bank stands alone, but no, they were more than more than keen to come along and um, have a base in Leslie because there is a massive need for something like this in Leslie. It's a very small village with about three and a half thousand people, but it's also a very, very deprived area. Yeah. And especially the distance uh, between <laughs> Leslie and their main venue for the Glen Rothes Food Bank, you know, people might have to walk that distance and everything. Yeah, definitely. I walked it with my children. Um, my children were on scooters, but I was just curious to see like how, how long it actually is. It took us 35 minutes to walk up there. I'm quite able-bodied um, and my children were scooting along on scooters, but if you're a single parent with a baby in a buggy and toddlers walking behind, or if you have a, a disability, like getting up to the food bank's not always feasible for them to do so. Um, bus routes, I think you need to get two buses to get to the food bank in Glenothis. Um and like if you're you might just not have the funds to pay for your bus fare up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's definitely going to be a great thing for the Leslie community as working in collaboration with the food bank and having it down there. We'll still operate our pantry but um it'll be smaller scaled. And we'll, we'll be doing other things within the community. Like our aim is to bring back like Leslie Gala, um, have like a really good Christmas light switch on and things like that for the children. That sounds good. Okay. Nidy, yeah. Shirley, um, you were talking about how you have the car park and you know for safety reasons, you know, the way how they go up to the table, you stand back, they like them collect and everything. But um do you offer like for people? I'm just thinking there for people that are not able-bodied. Do you offer help for them so that you know taking stuff to people's doors? Normally, normally people that come um, that are not able, they're maybe on like walking sticks or not great on their feet. If their husband or maybe come in their car and they'll park at the side of the road. Um, yeah, we'll help them to their cars with with the bags. Um, we don't really have anybody that really comes that wouldn't be able to carry the bags themselves. Do you know them? Most yeah. of them, most of them are actually yeah. able to carry. Or they sit in the car and 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 somebody will come and collect it, um, kind of, you know, for them. But yeah, it's 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 not really been an issue. No. At the beginning, we were doing deliveries, um, kind of out with the area for our, our current members, um, but then obviously kind of. Um, <laughs> He's a little bit. So we always have all the information for track and trace to keep ourselves and every, all the attendees safe. So we then said that you know they could come down themselves, and once bus kind of services restarted. So we're not currently doing uh, deliveries at the moment, but we were doing it at the beginning, uh, over and above the the actual pantry service. Uh -huh. Um, I'd just like to say, like, if anybody has any questions that would like to ask either pantry, you know, you feel free to ask anything. Um, even when this this meeting has finished, you might have questions to ask afterwards that you might have thought of, and we can pass these on to both of these pantries afterwards. <coughs> So, um, is there is there anything that you feel like the sh what? Do, you f do you feel that shops have been like easy to like like get communication between you to get started, get help there, you know, with all their mind to make up these bags and or like with you, Gail, be, you know, be be there for your pantry kind of thing. You broke up there. Can you repeat the question? I think uh, sure. you've sound cut off a bit, Sarah. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, the, try again. Just see if it, the sound works. Sorry, I was okay. Um, what I was trying to say was, with shops 
and everything, have you been able to get like a good um, communication between both parents, you know, for being to help you over this period? Yeah, so the, um, we've had great support from two local stores in Leslie. So Best One on Leslie High Street have been fantastic and are continuously bringing us bottles of iron brew and um, treats for the kiddies and Premier fantastic as well. They supplied us with loads of cleaning products um, and they're just a constant support for us as well. Um, local supermarkets like Morrison's and Asda's have been fantastic too. Um, they've been providing us support and if we're ever running low of anything, Michelle at Asda's Glenrothes have said, just drop us an email and we'll see what we can do for you. So they've all been fantastic. Community spirit during all this has just been incredible. Um, really, really good and so proud to be part of such a I think that a lot, so many people are really helping out that actually we were on our doorsteps to each other, but we didn't necessarily uh, support each other as often. So we've seen big change of how people connect and trying to connect in different ways. So this is just one of, of them. So uh, I was just going to yeah. ask as well, this is another question from, from Ola, like, what, what, what can help in the, the few months ahead? A lot of people are starting to already think about obviously it's change of seasons and then Further down the line, there's winter. Is there anything that is, is good to know now that, that can help both your projects look in the months ahead? What, what, why is helpful? What, what can help? We're just waiting for um, the public to be allowed back into the five council buildings so that people can actually start to select the food themselves um, rather than just it being a pre packed bag. Um, obviously, we don't know what's ahead of us with. The colder weather coming in with COVID, etc. Um, things could change dramatically again, and, and, and hopefully not. But um, you know, we are kind of prepared. We have a, a plan B and a C and a D <laughs> for um, whatever's ahead of us. And obviously, the the kind of economical situation of the country. Again, we don't know kind of what's what's ahead of us. They're saying a three-year kind of recovery. Mm -hmm. I think it'll take a lot longer than that. Food insecurity is going to peak, you know, when we don't know, probably maybe December, January, after more job losses, etc. So it's it's just about being prepared. And what Gail said, the community spirit and things that we've kind of yeah. received has been amazing. The, the support from uh, we work with a lady called Karen Hunter. Uh, she gives us amazing support from Fife Council. Um, so yeah, it was being prepared, I suppose, just to Can't move it. Yeah. Oh, what's up? The sound just jumped. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, being prepared sounds like a, a very important motto for you at the moment. What about Gail? Is there anything that that you think would be helpful uh, for people to know or that we can share? I'm um, so. We're just preparing for the worst and hoping for the best really with COVID and hoping that um, numbers do start to fall for the pantry. People are still needing the service. Um, we're about to move out of the station hotel and down to the pavilion in Leslie. Um, that's due to happen on the 1st of October. Um, so that's when we're going to hopefully be moving into a premise that we can kind of call home and we'll get like our signs up and things like that and then hopefully we could become a registered charity for the Leslie community and um, so yeah it's all looking quite positive for for the community pantry. Um, is it any other help that you think should be help should be out there for people? you know, if, if a second wave of this virus does, you know, come around kind of thing, you know, do you, what extra help do you think could be offered? I think the kind of welfare state of it um, just is quite hard. It was very hard for people to access kind of services in the welfare sector 
at the beginning of lockdown um, and we had a lot of people so we were signposting trying to signpost people to the yeah. right kind of places when they were coming along asking about gas electric and this that and the other people as far away as Loch Gelly were getting in contact with us um, and we'd always in their area so I think yeah the kind of welfare services if it yeah just to kind of get it more known and, yeah. and make it more accessible in in such a situation as what we were at the beginning of lockdown. I think mainly that I think for me personally I always think like the, the elderly you know there's when the shielding boxes were coming out you know there was a lot unless you were actually shielding you were entitled to them but a lot of elderly that can't get out and about like my mum and dad for instance depend on family to also go and get shopping you know but then could be entitled to like these obviously community pantries that obviously can't obviously get out and about but obviously aren't entitled to a shielding box either yeah gail is there anything that you feel should change i think we need to do a bit more for the, the local care homes as well when if, if there is a second wave they did a little bit um, just they weren't allowed visitors um, and it's really hard for them especially if they're in there and they're, they're used to having their family members come once or twice a week and having no great contact with them would have been really difficult and um, the community pantry um, were providing afternoon tea to our local um, care home and just knowing that that made a little bit of a difference for them that day was just fantastic um, I think like going off the Strokery Club as well, we're putting on performances at local care homes um, at the tail end of lockdown. Um, so, so things like that, I think like we really need to be thinking of like how can we kind of keep the elderly in touch with us because they were losing that bit of contact and um, they're just getting left to be in isolation and it's really, really sad. Mm -hmm. That's something that we've seen as well. I mean, from FC, we do very much work with other partners to help connect organizations. Uh, might it be some people needed a, a good internet connection. I, I still need one. It drops off from time to time. So I hope if I drop off, Lisa stays on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's, it's incredible how just having that or um, just even sometimes a tablet where you can look at someone and chat to them was yeah. was very important. A lot of people didn't have that, so we, we, we help where we can. Uh, but suddenly it's become so much more important. And uh, I think that's something we, we we are going to try and keep working out for the next few months to make sure people can still stay connected. Yeah. Even though there's all these public safety measures in place, we, we, we still need to be able to connect and chat to each other and, and, and find ways where we can help. Or even just chat and be okay. <laughs> you know, that's really important. Yeah. We found as well when they were phoning Sharon to register for their bags, you know, Sharon was kind of, yeah, well, and she still is because she still does it on a Wednesday. Is people, you know, kind of, she's built a relationship with people, even though it's just over the phone. Um, and, and that might be the only person that that person spoke to. Um, yeah. It's really heartwarming when you hear them come and then collect their bags and say, oh, I had a lovely chat. And, you know, kind of, you get to know them and, the interaction with them has is, is been really heartwarming. Excellent. Right, um, well, that's us sort of coming to the end of our, like, let's chat session. Is there anything else that you just want to put out there to help promote your pantries and extra shame, extra help? Um, so we're currently signing up new members, so if you're interested, if you live in um, then you can uh, message our page or our email, uh, just a name and contact number and we'll get back in touch with you to sign you up. Our pantry, when it does reopen, it costs £2 per week and you get a minimum of 10 mm -hmm. items and it's usually a lot more than that. Um, so if you are interested, then you give our little our page a link. <laughs> Shameless. <laughs> <laughs> Gail, is there anything you want to share about Leslie Community Pantry? So we're open uh, Monday to Friday, 10 till 5 p.m. Um, and we're open to 
the, the Leslie community um, for everybody. Anyone's welcome along to take what they're needing. Um, we do ask that they only take what they need. Um, but yeah, it's open to everybody. Okay, thank you. Really so great. I'd like to thank Shirley and Nairi from Food for Your Future. I'd like to thank Gail from Leslie Community Pantry. I'd also like to thank Leslie for interpreting today um, and Elric for keep going while I was cut off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so today at one o'clock on our Diversity Week 5 Facebook page, we have Sadie Brecken, who's an accordion player. So if you want to come back to our page and hear him play some music, you know, that would be great. Um, and tomorrow for Let's Chat, we have two interviews. We have one at 10 a.m. with the Letter Picker Brigade from Dyser. And at 2 p.m. we have a Brian Robertson Fern from Bragg who will be interviewed. And we also have Jackson at four o'clock singing for us as well. So please, for us. I hope it's all come back and Thank you. Great stuff. Thank you again. Uh, Check the page. The video, the video will be on the page very soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.